Okay, uh, as you can remember, this is where we ended the uh, lesson yesterday, or the tutorial. I'm um, going to basically do a more simple one today. All I'm going to concentrate on doing is the cap, if you remember. This is our box. If I just zoom in on this area, we can actually look at the... Let me just close all this up. We can look at the picture, which is this one. Okay, so we've got to create this plastic cap, and you know it's got a little plastic rim around it, which is where it connects to the cardboard. So what I'm going to do, and you notice the terrible thing of having a bevel and a divot there. So what I'm going to try and do is show you how to do all this and make it look nice and neat and interesting. Okay, it's going to be a strange way I'm going to do it because Illustrator has a 3D option, but unfortunately the way it renders the lighting condition doesn't basically make it look nice, so I'm going to do it in a different way and then apply some gradients and everything, but we'll see how it goes. First thing I'm going to do, basically add all those back up again. I'm going to lock some of them off so I can see them as uh, lines like I did before, and I'm going to make a new layer above uh, the gradient boxes one we did yesterday, and I'm going to call it uh, cap, simply cap. All right. Now, what I'm going to do is just use a simple color that we have in the palette, which is uh, that one. Yeah, you can see the colors on there. Okay, but it's the one that's like a, a muddy blue color. Okay, what we're going to do is simply make a ellipse, a perfect ellipse, like so. Okay, you notice that already is in that mode, so I want to get that out of that mode. You notice what we've got here is some, yeah, some perspective lines I drew when I was constructing the box. What we have to try and do is put this on those construction lines so it's actually in perspective. The best way to do this is to go to Effects, Distort, Transform, Free Distort. And what you notice is you have this effect. What you have to try to do is to align these lines to match up with the lines that you have on your box so it looks like it's actually in perspective quite difficult to do but I'll show you something in a minute that's roughly okay okay so I'm going to press OK on that yeah we'll do that two things you'll notice the first one is that the actual real object still stays present and the second thing is you may notice if I put it in the right place it's not exactly the way I want it so what we can do is go over to the appearance palette which is here you'll notice it's listed what we've done as uh, if I just close that off you'll notice it shows it as the original one and it shows the effect so what we can do is click on it and it opens it up again in the original status that it was in before so what I'm going to do is stretch this down a little bit you have to be careful with this as well because if these go outside the box there's no way of getting them back so you have to reset it and start all again from the beginning okay so what I'm going to do is just twist it a little bit more make it a bit taller I think that's what we need more than anything so do that, press OK, and that is roughly the shape we need. I'm just going to resize it so it fits. We're not talking about the plastic rim part, we're talking about the base of this cap we're talking about. Okay, so what I've done is I've done that. I'm going to go back to my layer menu, and this is an important thing I tend to try and do, is to, you know, I copy it and lock and hide one of them. So basically if we, don't, if we do mess it up and uh, do anything wrong, we can always go back to the original one. This one now I've got to convert into uh, a solid object, so I'll just go to uh, Object, Expand Appearance or Expand if it's available. Okay, and we've got a solid object now. Now, we go to the impressive 3D section, and you notice here it's got uh, Extrude and Bevel. This is the option we need. I just have to move the box out of the way so I can see everything working. Okay, I'm going to press Preview instantly. It's going to put it in the wrong angle, but we're going to press preview anyway. This surface here, the bluish surface, is the angle for the top, the cap, the bit we've selected. Obviously, this has got to be at the top, like so. And what we can do is rotate it round, like so, until we're happy. It's in the right angle that we want. Like so, like it's sitting on top of the box. 
Mm. Again, we can change this, so don't worry too much. I'm going to give it a bit of perspective because it needs to look like it's coming slightly out of the box. I'll put it on 45, and our extrusion needs to go oops, not that much, a little bit bigger. One thing you'll notice as well is it's coming from the surface of the middle edge section. Let's see. A lot less than that. Be before. 50 ish. So I'm going to make it 60. You can type it in, obviously. Let's see if that works. Mm -hmm. This will be a bit bigger than that, 70. Okay, okay. And what we're going to do now is put it on classic bevel. But you notice the depth there is too much. But it says there it's at 4. So we're going to drop it all the way down to 1. Like so. And it's less now. It's like a, a small cap. Okay. What you'll notice though is it's done it at the bottom level, but we can change that in a minute. Okay, so once you're happy with this, uh, I'm saying I'm happy, but I'm going to put this up to 80. Okay, that's all right, I'm happy with that now. And we just basically keep these. Okay, it says bevel or extrude on the outside on the original object or on the inside. If I do that, you'll notice it always done is expand this slide, doesn't change any of the variables that much. Okay. Now what we need to do is just open up the more options, which is where we get the light. Okay, the light, if you remember, is coming from the top surface, like so. So it's hitting this surface directly. But as I said, it doesn't really matter that much at the moment because we're going to change everything. Uh, one thing you need to do is you see this blending option. Try to ramp this up to around about maybe 100 if you can, if your processor can stand it. Like so and that's just going to be doing these steps a lot more extreme okay that's all we need to do for this you'll notice though this it's all flat color if you want to get some idea of how it's supposed to look you can make an extra light and put it around the side or even around the back which is this button here and you'll see what it looks like if it was lit properly with different kinds of lighting yeah because all objects say for instance there's light coming down here hitting that surface it also bounces off the white here and hit the object back again, which is called uh, diffuse lighting. Okay, so it's important to consider, and that's what we're going to be doing with our uh, gradients in a minute. I'm going to ditch that though, I'm just going to have it flat. Okay, everything then is set up how we want it to be. Okay, I'm going to press OK. And it's made it into a, a three dimensional object. Again, I'm going to copy that, lock and hide one of them, and then on the other thing, I'm going to create an expand appearance. Like so, so you've got a solid object now. Before I do anything, I'm going to move it into the right place because it's not in the right place exactly. It's more like the right place. You can see now it's fitting where I need it to be, where the, the cap would start. Like so. Okay. Now I've made it into an object, you'll notice as well, which is quite clever. If I zoom in a little bit more, they're all separate objects as well. So. I'm going to create this and open it, and you'll notice we've got several different objects here. Very good, because we can obviously change them all and edit them and get rid of this bottom piece, which we don't need, which is the under bevel. I believe you'll find that's the one right at the bottom, so you can just delete that one. That's gone. All right. Now, what we can do, I'm going to do the top surface first, which is this one. I'm just going to change it to have a, a gradient coming from the top across. It's like this. Pick the natural colour we had before, drop it just there. And this has got a terrible colour over that side, but what we're going to do is literally go to this side and drop, get rid of that one. Double click on it, make that a little bit darker. And so, but this one needs to be a lot lighter, but you'll notice they're all stepped everywhere. So what you need to do is remember from my other tutorials, you just literally hold down your Alt key and drag, I'm sorry, your Command key and drag, and it lightens them all at the same time like so but you'll notice it's at the wrong angle so we're going to twist it a little bit round so the dark area is here and it gets light across there which is good and then just move that across a little bit I'm not going to have it at 50 because it doesn't need to be at 50 but you can see it's got a nice sheen across it now like it was plastic right now we're going to move on to the next one I'm going to do the, the big base bit now it's a little bit more complicated than the top because we've got to have light here and it goes into dark 
a little bit of reflective light here goes into shadow again and have another bit of highlighting that side so we're going to take it in uh, steps first thing I need to do is make sure it's there's a clipping path okay so that's okay it's not a set of actual facets which we don't want we would have to actually do it so it was all one object if we did okay luckily for me it didn't turn into that way I'm going to apply the uh, gradient as I do before always is I'm going to make one section of it really dark for some reason it's not letting me do it there we go so I can see the gradient line is coming straight down so what we need to do is to twist it so we have it at a different angle again I still can't really see I'm going to make that white yeah, that's sort of okay. I'm just going to get it back to its original tone. All right, this is too light though. So what we need to do is to create a the back tone as it was before. Change the angle again back to where it was. Move this into the center point. Like so take this one, put it on the edge, which is where the back line is going to be. Okay. But that's too extreme. So what we need to do is copy this one, put it so it's a very fine edge, but then we've got to make this more subtle. Like so, so the gradient between here and here goes a lot softer. Okay. This is a lot of testing, but you'll notice for instance that then becomes so diffused you can't see the highlight. So what you may want to do is to make it even stronger highlight like that, so you can actually see the strength of the highlight, which is roughly the same as this. Okay, just to make my life a lot easier, oops. I'm just going to grab this one, and drag that all the way across, and do the same thing here, and just then oops. grab the diamond and then make this part more subtle. Yeah, so there's kind of a line here which is affected by the uh, diamond we've created at this point. Yeah, maybe even make it a little bit stronger. I'm just trying to think where the highlight's going to be, but try and make it look super realistic. So that's a big problem. I mean, you may want to do something like this. So the highlight's hitting that front surface if it's going straight down. Okay, it takes a little bit of tweaking, but roughly, you know, that's how it should be. Okay. So what we're going to do now is that the final piece here, that's going to have a lot more highlight on it than this part. Okay, but I'm going to use this as a basic structure for the actual creation of the uh, one, one. So this one, this is the cap. I'm just going to select that gradient. So let me just select the gradient. Yeah. Okay. Go to here. No. Let's see if we can do it again. So let me choose the gradient for some reason. Okay, that's the gradient. Just get the same angle, roughly. The one thing you'll notice because of the way the cap is. Now you see this is where the problem lies now. Here. Yeah. We've got some steps which we don't want. Okay, the way we get rid of those is if I just make this back into the neutral blue that we had. If we're going to the group, you'll probably notice. Yeah, this has got all these other steps. So I'm going to select the whole group, make it all the same color. Like so now I use uh, use this tool. Here. It's called uh, Unite. Basically, if I now zoom in, you'll notice they're all the same. Okay. Now <laughs> we add this uh, gradient to it, and it does it all the way around the object, which is what we wanted. Quickly manipulate this so that the highlights were where they were before. Like so. One thing you'll notice though, this colour has got to be a lot softer because it's not as dark because it's in between this colour and this colour. 
So what we have to do is drag this down. If I just hide this so I can see what I'm doing as well, it'll probably be a lot more help. Like so. And you can even change this one. Everything's got to be a little lighter than what it was before. This can go almost to white if you wanted to, because it's a very strong highlight. It's almost the same angle as the actual surface, so it's like hitting it directly on. You also notice that this means that the lines are going this angle, and they should be going a strange angle that way. So what we have to do is twist it this way. So the lines are going in the right direction, which means I have to move a lot of these to compensate for the fact this line needs to go up there then. Okay, that doesn't seem to affect that much, that bit that much, okay, which is good. Yeah. But as you can see, I've built it up. Maybe that needs to be a little bit dark, I don't know. Okay, like that maybe. Alright, so we've got a three dimensional looking uh, actually I think that's the one that needs to change a bit. We've got a three dimensional looking cap. Like so it was a bit extreme. I'm gonna do something later on actually to make it more like a shadowed area as well because obviously it's gonna cast a shadow on the on the surface here, which we've got to consider. So I'm just gonna soften all those up a little bit so it compensates that bit there. Okay, I'm just gonna zoom out, have a quick look at it with the rest of the colours on. So just close that up. Just add these back on. Looks quite smart. Yeah, looks like a cap. And so, all right. Next stage, I'm going to put the little divot and then the plastic rim. That's quite simple to achieve. Simply, and unhide my object. Simply, we've got to copy this. The best way to copy this is just open your groups. And so. You know, this is just one surface, so all I'm going to do is copy it and just drag it into there, and then take it out of the group. Make sure it's the cap section. This is going to be your base, so it's going to be underneath your main cap. Like so I'm just going to resize it slightly. You notice it's already under. And then you've got to position it so it looks like it's rotating around the main cap above. So, as I said to you before, we're going to be adjusting this with a shadow over the top of it, so you won't need to worry too much about the fact that this colour looks like it's losing the right effect, okay? Because we're going to have a, a gradient over the top of it, like we did the shadow here, okay? The last bit we've got to do though is uh, copy this again. We'll put it over the top of the, uh, the cap and make it really small. Like so, put it where you believe the centre is, where the divot is. Yeah, like that. And if I hide again, you'll notice, if I just move out of the way, it's actually in the wrong place, it needs to be the reverse because the highlight will be on the opposite side, so literally all you need to do, you can do two things, you can grab this and put it that way and that way, or you can actually rotate it around so the divot is on the opposite side. So this way we need. Like so and if I just deselect it, there you go, that's a really, really good effect actually. All right. So if I zoom out, we have our Tetra Pack cap sitting on top of our uh, Tetra Pack. It's done in a little different way than using the 3D option because I don't find some of the lighting conditions exactly the way we want it. This gives kind of a nice, more shiny plastic look to it. There's a few little things I could do to it to make it better. It seems like it has a little bit too much distance on that side. So I'm going to just drop that down there because obviously perspective will make it thicker there than that. Okay, anyway, that's your cap. What we're going to do next is we're going to apply the, all the labeling on the sides, the surfaces. A lot of this I'm going to have ready, but uh, these are just simple things that. Uh, 
you can find on the internet or you can create yourself. Like the logo is going to be a cartoon character. Obviously, the fonts depend on what fonts you have on your computer as well, and so forth. So don't worry too much about those. You can build them up according to how you want them to. So at the end of the day, you can even stop at this point and do the labeling the way you want to. But if you want to watch the next uh, tutorial, you can do. Okay, but this this is your final Tetra pack without labels.